You cannot have failed to have noticed the Samsung Galaxy range of smartphones if you've looked to change your mobile device within the last 24 months. The brand is growing from strength to strength with record sales on many of their Galaxy devices. Under this brand falls many different handsets, some of which are smaller mini versions of the more capable premium ones. The S4 Mini is one such example. Many have purchased the Mini thinking it had all the capabilities of the bigger S4, only to find, when it was too late, that this was not the case. Sony have now stepped in the ring to bring the ideal solution, a smaller sized handset that retains the majority of high-end or premium features. Okay, the screen size and battery have had to be compromised, but some is to be expected. What Sony do that Samsung and HTC have not is limited these compromises. The result is the Z1 Compact. Commanding a bit of a premium, how do they stack up in terms of hardware specification and real-world operational differences? The specs certainly stack up in favour of the Compact, and at about £80 to £100 more than the S4 Mini, it's not surprising. However, spread the £100 difference over the average 24 month ownership and for an extra five pound per month there are some considerable advantages naturally the quad core outperforms the dual core but everyday tasks such as making calls sending texts browsing the web and similar procedures the dual core is more than adequate however start throwing some mobile games at it and really intensive multitasking and the luck becomes apparent the compact is a playstation mobile approved device meaning it will be better suited to those who like to kick back with a game or two but that does not mean the s4 mini is not capable it is just not as capable when it comes to the more intensive and demanding content. Consider your usage and be led by that, not just by the fact that the Z1 is superior. With only 8GB from day one on the S4 Mini, it's really at a disadvantage already. Add the heavy Samsung software and the 8GB soon comes closer to 5. Like the Z1 Compact, it does have a micro SD memory card slot, meaning both benefit from expandable storage, but the Compact has 16GB out of the box and a lighter OS install, so initial value for money for memory goes to the Compact. The Compact boasts 2GB against the 1.5 gig of RAM on the S4 Mini. With only 512 meg between them, it will only be those that push the limits of these devices that notice the difference. This again portrays itself in the more intensive activities such as gaming. It's worth mentioning that whilst both have 4.3 inch displays, they vary in resolution, with the Z1 Compact offering 1280x720 against the 960x540 of the S4 Mini. The PPI is too affected with 342 against 256 respectively. This is by no means a big thing, but a small notable difference. Plaster camera is not all about megapixels, there is no denying that the technology and the components used on the Z1 Compact set an extreme hurdle for the S4 Mini, which can not possibly jump over. The Mini puts up a good fight and produces an all-round decent photo and video results, but the Sony shows Samsung how it's done. Both offer quite extensive control over the camera and what it can do. Personally, I think the S4 Mini's interface is nicer on the camera, but there isn't a lot to differentiate the two. There are value-added features such as social live and info eye on the Z1, but whether they are of any value to you will depend on your needs. The Compact does too have a dedicated camera button, the S4 Mini does not. Bigger is often better with the battery, but as such, it knocks onto the physical size of the device. There is just 400 milliamp hours between the two here. The Compact has the bigger battery, but this is built in, whereas the S4 Mini is removable. There are some advantages to this, but battery technology is so good now that it's rare you actually need to remove the battery or replace it. The Mini will last a good day and possibly longer with power saving mode. The S4 cannot withstand the might of the Compact's battery. Even with the higher resolution display, this device can last a good couple of days with stamina mode turned on. It's quite impressive and somewhat odd when you do not need to actually charge the device every day. This will not be applicable to all, but many could be in this position. Both are Android devices. The S4 Mini is stuck currently on Android 4.2, whilst the Z1 Compact is on 4.3. There's not a great deal of difference, but Sony and Samsung offer a customized version of Android. Samsung's customization is deeper and heavier and affects the onboard memory, whereas the Sony is not quite as rich, but looks to offer value over stock Android. It's personal opinion as to which you prefer. I don't mind either. Samsung's interface looks more polished, but the impact on performance and memory is noticeable. Neither device is weak in terms of connectivity, but the Compact has MHL out as well as Miracast technology, which gives it the edge over the S4 Mini for media lovers or business users. Whilst most phones withstand the odd splash, the Z1 can survive a full immersion in fresh water for up to 30 minutes. Rare that you might need this, but you can more comfortably use the Z1 Compact in wet conditions. Just make sure the covers are closed if you're going to immerse the device. Plastic is well known to be one of the favourite materials for Samsung and the S4 Mini is made up primarily of this. The Compact, on the other hand, has an aluminium and glass construction. Both feel solid enough, but the Compact feels more premium of the two without doubt. There is a soft edge on the S4 though, which can be of benefit in comparison to the square S slab S design of the Compact. It doesn't take a genius to work out that on first impressions, the Z1 often wins. The Compact is 30 grams heavier than the S4 Mini, but it's not surprising when you consider the package and the materials. It's noticeable in the hand, but quite possibly worth it for what you get. Once being small and lightweight was of uppermost importance, 
finished, but the demand for features appears today to outweigh this. It will inevitably be a personal decision. There is quite some variation in the specs. This of course comes as a result of the Z1 Compact being a squashed Z1 rather than the S4 Mini, which is a smaller and less featured S4. It will be personal opinion as whether you feel the added bulk and cost of the Compact is worth the extra spend. Neither device will leave you struggling and demanding much more if you're aware of the differences. If, however, you want to ensure that you get the better all-round experience, you would be best off opting for the Z1 Compact. For a full detailed specification comparison, visit clove.co.uk.